everybody, welcome back to TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Again, it's TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to YouTube, to the blog, uh, and then follow me on Snapchat, right? For those of you that are on there that are hip to this new stuff, uh, to the yellow ghost, okay? Uh, today's question, and I'm doing two videos today, but... The first question is this video I'm going to do that you're watching. It's all about what happens after you get your first study as a research site. So, good question I got from one of my viewers, and uh, they happen to be a brand new site, so obviously they don't have very much experience with um, what happens after they get a study. So, this is what happens after the site selection visit. For those of you who don't know what site selection visits are, I have videos on it, but essentially it's when a sponsor comes out to your site, a monitor will come out to your site and make sure that you're qualified to do the study, blah, blah, blah. You'll eventually get selected or you won't. You'll receive a letter. So this video applies to those of you who have been selected and now you're anxious to get started, but you don't know what to do next, right? And fear not, it's a lot simpler than you think. And the real work begins now. So, first of all, the next, the very next step would be, and, and it, it's a twofold step. So, they'll send you the regulatory documents, and then they'll also send you the contract and budget to negotiate. Okay. So, contract and budget. I have hours of webinars on how to negotiate. I'm not going to cover it in this video. Regulatory. They send you the startup documents, which is the 1572 form, the protocol, the protocol signature page, the investigator brochure, the investigator brochure acknowledgement page, financial disclosure forms, um, IRB questionnaires. I've done videos on that as well. So you'll get those two things separately, right? The separate individual will be sending you both of those things. Uh, once you do that, you're going to get your monitor to contact you to set up a site initiation visit, an SIV, right? And also in between your regulatory and your actual site initiation visit, your site will be receiving the study drug, they will be receiving the lab kits, uh, and any other study supplies such as maybe an ECG machine, or if you have any patient e-diaries, um, or if the study consists of any other kind of equipment that you'll need um, that the sponsor provides, you'll be receiving these things as well, right? You'll also be receiving access to the electronic data system, the EDC, Electronic Data Capture System. You'll be receiving access to the IVRS. The investigator will be receiving the unblinded um, how to become unblinded in the case of an emergency should one of the study participants um, end up in the ER and the PI needs to find out what drug the patient was taking. They have unblinding instructions. Uh, these are the kind of things you'll be receiving prior to your SIV. At your SIV, and this entire time you cannot screen subjects, okay? You cannot screen subjects until you have had your site initiation visit and you have had IRB approval. Right? So your monitor is going to come out to your SIV, they're going to make sure you have everything in place, they're going to make sure you have all your IP, and we, we go through this in great detail there, um, in our CRA Academy, where we're training future monitors on how to conduct site initiation visits, but for this video it's going to be quick. They're going to make sure you have the drug, they're going to make sure you have the lab kits, they're going to make sure you have access to EDC, IVRS, they're going to make sure you've done all the regulatory documents, they're going to make sure that all the safety reports that have been uh, have been sent to your site uh, have been filed and acknowledged. So safety reports will start coming almost immediately if it's not an ongoing study. Um, or actually, if it is an ongoing study. If it's not an ongoing study, there are no safety reports unless they're doing a similar trial for the same IP somewhere else. Right, you'll still your site will still be receiving the safety reports. These are called SUSAR reports. So your monitor is going to make sure all the regulatory is done, the contracts done, the lab kits are there, the 
the um, investigational product is there, that the coordinators have everything they need, access to IVRS, EDC, the PI has the same. Uh, then, once the SIV has taken place and has, um, has been successfully conducted, and the site has IRB approval, because you'll need IRB approval, and you have the latest version of the informed consent form available, then you can start screening subjects. So a lot of you researchers out there, or you brand new research sites that have gotten a study but haven't started screening subjects, you're anxious because during, I understand you need revenue and during this period you're kind of like not knowing what to do next and you have to follow the sponsor's timelines. This process, this process of post site selection visit and then pre-SIV could be anywhere from two weeks to three months, right? I've seen a wide range of time frames for this. So if you're really anxious about it, uh, follow up with your monitor on when they anticipate to come out for the site initiation visit. If you're also really anxious about it, make sure you get your regulatory and contracts done um, in a timely manner. Now, if it's a brand new study, and you're not an add-on site, then you might also need to wait for the investigator meeting before you can start screening. So maybe you're one of the sites that got finished with their regulatory and their contract early, all right? But unfortunately, you have to wait for all the other sites to finish theirs, and then you have the investigator meeting. So you, in some cases, you can't screen until af after the investigator meeting, and in some cases, you won't even have your site initiation visit until after the investigator meeting. So just be patient, you're on the right track. During this time, instead of freaking out, what I would do is start pre-screening subjects so that when they do initiate your site, you hit the ground running, all right? And you cannot screen subjects, remember you can't screen subjects until you get IRB approval, right? Um, the, CRA or the CRO or sponsor will select the IRB for you if you can use a central IRB if you can't, then you have to use a local IRB and you have, you have your own. They have their own processes. This is why central IRBs are a lot easier, right? So rather than freaking out, just relax and figure out how you can enroll subjects uh, when you do get initiated, right? So you can get that revenue coming through. Dan from theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Take care.